Hi, welcome to the Jeff and Jerry Show. My name's Jeff, I'm the borough manager of Mount Pleasant, and Jerry, who you don't see today, is uh, recuperating from knee surgery. So as always, standing in for Jerry is... I'm Rick Fike, I'm the producer of local programming for the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel, what you're watching right now. Well, thanks for joining us again, Rick. I know you join us every once in a you're while, welcome. but it's always nice to have you uh, participate. Yeah. So for those uh, who didn't know, Jerry had knee surgery, he's doing well. Uh, he just had it last week, and so um, we have some shows that uh, he may not be a part of. And some of the shows we taped so that we knew about the surgery, and right. we'll, we'll air those, and he'll be in them, but he's still off for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, get a hold of Jerry. I'm sure he'd love to hear from you if you, you know, have a way of getting a hold of him. Facebook, give him a call. I'm yeah. sure he'd like to hear the well wishes. Yeah. So. Okay, so today's show is a little bit different uh, than what we normally do. Today's a little bit, um, today's show happened by accident. Um, I met a person uh, who opened up a business in town, a little boutique, and as we talked about uh, her opening the business, um, she started to tell a little bit about her story and how she arrived as a business owner today. And so I thought the story was really interesting, and I thought that uh, people may enjoy hearing, uh, or, or at least uh, feeling maybe a little bit better about themselves and maybe what they're going through, for someone who really went through a lot, of, a lot of rough times to get to where she's at. And our guest today is Jillian. Hi. Hi. <laughs> thanks Hi. for coming today. Thank you for having me. And thanks for telling your story. You're because, welcome. Because... Um, when Jillian and I talked, I said to Jillian, is there anything uh, that you don't want to talk about? And she said no. So um, the questions I'm, we're going to ask and some of the information we're going to have you, her tell us today um, has all been approved by her. <laughs> so she, she just feels that she'd like to tell her story too. And this would be a good format. Absolutely. Yeah. So I don't know the story. So I'm kind of along for the ride here too. <laughs> I'm just excited to hear. And, uh, and I'm always a big, I think it's so neat when, because nobody has it perfect, right? right? And nobody is perfect. People might want you to think that they have the perfect life or they have this or they have that. But I'm more encouraged by someone who's been through uh, struggles to get where they are right. than I am by anybody who I perceived as having the perfect house, perfect family, perfect car, perfect dog, all those things. You know, I like to, to get the nitty gritty and I like to hear the struggles. And uh, so, because, because I know there's always, there's always a reason for the struggle, you know, there's always a message that can come out of the mess. So. And usually adversity like that does make you a better person. Absolutely. Um, because if you went through all that adversity and you came out semi on top or better than what you were before that says a lot about your your personality and pres perseverance about life N yeah it, and adversity doesn't always propel you into a, being a better person it can right. make you a, a worse person yeah so it's a big credit to me like uh, it, it goes a long way for me when i see somebody who's been through so much but like when you came in you had a smile on your face today and it's just those things that just means everything to me i can't wait to talk well and the other thing is we all think we have it tough. You know, sometimes I'll say, Jesus, I can't believe what's going on. But when you talk to somebody else who really had it tough, right. it kind of puts it in perspective. It really is not so bad after right. all. You right, know? yeah. Well, we, we, I know you're anticipating this story here, and so am I. <laughs> no so, pressure. <laughs> you so know. Let's talk a little bit about who you are. So where were you born and raised? I was born on July 25th. My birthday's on Saturday. Oh, how um, happy <laughs> birthday. Oh, thank birthday. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, in Monroeville, I grew up in North Huntington my whole life for the most part um, up until I was in sixth grade and that's when a lot of my lifestyle changes hit. Um, but I lived with my grandmother up until eighth grade or not eighth grade, sixth grade and um, my mom and I decided to move to our own trailer. She finally got her own place. And that's kind of where it just started to spiral. She was in a traumatic car accident when I was in third grade. Um, it caused her to have PTSD very bad and she ended up becoming 
bipolar. Uh, she's What's PTSD, just for the people post, who... Post-traumatic stress dis- syndrome. Um, she had a six-inch intrusion from her temple back to her brain. Um, and so that kind of stemmed her psychological issues that she had. Um, she is now a paranoid schizophrenic, manic depressed, and bipolar. So after that, she um, pretty much thought the FBI and the police and the CIA were tapping her phones and everything was revolved about uh, government conspiracies. Now, you were in third grade at the time. Mm-hmm. So you had any brother? did you say you had brothers and sisters? I do you? have. Um, so I have three other siblings. They're my half siblings. I met my brother for the first time when I was 11. And I met my two sisters when I was 16 when I found out I was pregnant. So when you were three years old, uh, no, in third grade. Three, <laughs> third grade. When you were thir- at third grade, you were there by yourself with your mother. Yes. So yes, how did you, so did you, re- did you understand what she was going through at, at third grade? No, no that I had did to be, not. That had to be tough. That right? was the toughest thing. Um, so in, the biggest thing I remember is the drinking and the and the medication abuse because she was in so much pain. Um, so it led her to have an alcohol dependency and a prescription dependency, and she never will admit that she was dependent on those things. Um, and actually, she really just became clean probably about four years ago, the last time I 302'd her. You think you raised yourself? What would you say? I'm Do you sorry. think you raised yourself? During For the period? most part, yeah. Um, I did have a very close aunt that helped me out and my grandmother up until she passed away, but I took care of my grandmother when I moved back in with her. I was 15 when I moved back in with her, and she was at that point almost wheelchair-bound. So it got to the point that I was taking care of her and then ended up pregnant. So I was pregnant and taking care of her, and my aunt helped, but then she passed away in 2007. So, yeah, I would say for the most part, I raised myself. So during the time that you moved back with your grandmother, mm-hmm. what, what was the situation with your mother then at that point? Um, I would go back and forth. She lived in North Huntington, too, as well. As well. We had just moved back from Terenum, Um And she would go back and forth on good days. Um, she'd be clean, sober for a week, then go back. Um, at one point, she was put on house arrest. Um, because she got a DUI, so she was put on house arrest, and she was good for that period of time, and then she relapsed, and it just got to a point that as we bounced around place to place, I couldn't take it anymore. I was, you know, by the time I finally moved out, I was 18, like fully having no contact with her and living with her. Was there, was there, prior to the accident with your mom, was there any mental issues prior to that accident? From what my family tells me, no. They wow. said that she was, for the most part, normal. She was crazy Kathy, as they called her. Um, just very fun-spirited. Sure. Um, well, yeah, it can go either way. Right, I guess. you know, <laughs> yeah. so... It's fun but, Kathy and crazy Kathy, but I guess crazy was fun. Yeah, like, it was a it was a different, a different person. Um, right. Never showed any signs of what she went through whatsoever. Wow. How, how, what, what role did your father play in your life? Um, at that age? At that age, I was lucky if I saw him on the weekends. If not, he was a truck driver. Um, my parents had been split since I was two. Um, so I really didn't have much involvement with him. When you were growing up, again, between third grade and I think you said you were, what, 15 when you moved? Mm-hmm. Um, do you recall any any anything that happened during that time period where you just said, I, I can't take it. There was a lot that happened in those time frames. Um, so my mom and I got our own place when I was in third grade, a little bit after her car accident, and then we lost that place. She went up for sheriff sale right after. Um, instead of me moving back in with my grandmother because she offered for me to come and stay with her, I wanted my mom to come too because I was scared. I, you know, That's the biggest fear as a kid is that your parent's going to die from something that they're doing to themselves, whether it be alcohol, the drugs. I was terrified she would kill herself. Um, So I refused to move in with my grandma and went with my mom to a homeless shelter in Trenum. We were there for uh, six months, and a lady um, that was at the school met my mom and let us come live with her until we found our own place. 
Um, and I thank her for that every day because that was those three months in a woman's shelter were horrible. I was almost raped while I was in there. It is not a place that a child should be in. Um, they do do wonderful thing for women that are, you know, on their own and need help. But at that time, it was just not a good situation. So that happened. And while we were there, my father was then arrested for third degree murder. So my name was, my last name was broadcasted all over the news and the things that people would say to you about your father, who I didn't even have that good of a relationship with. Um, it was really hard going through middle school and, and dealing with all of that. You got pregnant at what age? 16. Was that something that, I know this is going to be a tough <laughs> question. It's okay. Was that something that by accident, or is that something that you said, look, I need to get, maybe I should get out of this lifestyle and, and move on with my life, and if I got pregnant, I would, it would help me get out of this? No. Okay. Um, it was an accident. I was actually on birth control. It was that 0.1% that got pregnant on the pill. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. No. Do you ever play the lottery? No, <laughs> I do actually, and I've never won, so I stop. <laughs> Just asking. So, so now you're pregnant, and what? Where did that take you to? Um, so I was living with my grandma when I found out I was pregnant. Um, I did move back in with my mother. Was the, was the, the father of the child part of your life at that point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. He was part of, we were in a relationship. He was part of my life. Um, we didn't break up until about a month after my son Patrick was born, my oldest. Um, it was, yeah, about a month, I would say. And then we had a very rough patch. We are definitely in a better place now than we were back then but it was it was very bad we had well, you were young young dumb um a lot of anger issues not ready to be parents because 16 is not the age to start raising right. a child um i still had to finish high school which i did i graduated high school still i went through norman's night program that they had um i was involved in a pack program as well it's called it's through westmoreland county it's for um pregnant women and now they accept men um but it's just a support group for pregnant girls so that they can get through high school the goal is to have you graduate high school um and if you don't graduate high school you get your ged you are able to get a job you're able to be a member of society and um that that really helped me because that was my therapy you know i would go there and express everything that was going on at the time whether it be me fighting with my oldest dad or my mom having a psychotic break or you know whatever it may be they were my life my life then so so that takes you now to college did you were you able to yeah go to i grad yeah I, w I went to itt tech um i graduated from there with a criminal justice degree i bat i i questioned back and forth what i really wanted to do i was in between that and nursing um my mom really did not want me to be a nurse because my aunt is a nurse and they have that sister coral so i went with the criminal justice i love the field i still would love to do something with crim criminal justice anti and nursing um but i went got my two-year degree from there i worked at kennywood for six years um i was also a manager at burger king with that because kennywood's a seasonal position so i was a manager at burger king um from there, I met my met my now husband okay. in college. Let's take a step back. Were okay. you were you raising your Patrick? I believe mm -hmm. were you raising Patrick by yourself, or it was was anybody helping you? Um, for the most part, by myself. My mom was still sporadic here and there when she had her good days. She could be in his life, but there was a lot of bad. I'd get phone calls while I was at work. You need to come pick your son up because we're going to arrest her or something and I'd leave the house in the morning and she'd be completely normal it would happen within an hour and a half time span of me leaving to her getting drunk and high and I had no clue um so at that point when the cops kept showing up to my work telling me to go get my son I stopped it at that point she stopped watching him um so yeah I mean it's a lot. <laughs> so, so now you uh, you met another gentleman. Yes, I was in college. We both went to ITD Tech. We both got criminal justice degrees, and 
I met him and we didn't, he was a semester ahead of me. Um, and we actually didn't start dating until he had graduated. So um, he didn't want anything interfering with his schooling because he also had a very hard past and his goal was just to graduate college and get a degree, um, which I respected that. And he also had just become a parent as well. And it was a news, you know, a news flash to him because he never expected to be a parent. So we kind of battled our, our issues together at that point because I was a single mom. He is a newly single dad, both having, you know, a history that – just needed two people to work together and make it work. I, th I think some people would be hesitant to get into a relationship with somebody, and you hear this all the time, with lots of baggage. Right. <laughs> but it seems like he had baggage, so he probably was a good fit because he probably understood a lot of what you went through and what you went, how you are what you are today. He probably understood a lot of that, I would think, because um, he went through it too, didn't he? Yes and no. His his history was, I don't want to say worse than mine, but he went through totally different things that you can't compare the two. Um, mine was more being on my own and raising myself because of choices I didn't make. It was choices that fell upon me because I had a lack of parenting or – you know, a lack of support, his were choices he chose. And, you know, he learned from them and made himself a member of society now, so. Throughout your life, <clears throat> you know, obviously bad circumstance after bad circumstance after bad circumstance happens as you're saying these things. I guess it's like a two-part question. Number one is, what was it that kept you going all that time? My son. That was going to be the second part. Because it's almost as if having Patrick at such a young age was one of those things, even though it wasn't planned, mm -hmm. that kind of brought you to the fact that now life is different. Now what I do or what I decide, if whether or not, and I know it's a morbid topic, but whether I decide to go on or not, right. is now doesn't just impact me. It impacts him, right? And and I don't want him to go to to not have a parent like I didn't. Correct. And so I think when you look at that and think about it that way, it's really amazing how he came into your life in an unexpected way, as you said. Right. That point, what point one percent or <laughs> yeah. whatever, you know. But but he was so instrumental in your life truly continuing I, I would imagine I, right. I'm not going to ask you that but I can imagine no, it I was mean, he was the reason that I I kept going because there's many but, times that I could have been so deeply depressed and that that is something that happens even after having him I was so oh, depressed yeah. postpartum depression sure. is a real thing um, yeah. and I had so much going on realizing I'm raising my child by myself and not only that I'm now 17 years old and I have this baby. What am I going to do? I have a job at Burger King, you know, making five fifteen an hour. Like that's not. But I did it. I raised him one hundred percent on minimum wage and did not get assistance. So, yeah. did you ever contem contemplate suicide? Yes. And what 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 made you not? Did you, did you Patrick. Patrick. Do you ever contemplate giving him up for adoption? Um, I did it for actually when I first got pregnant, I contemplated abortion, but I, I'm not for abortion. And I always said that, but I felt like my outside around me was more for it. Um, and keep hearing that you screwed up your life. You're never going to amount to anything was one of the hardest things to hear. Um, but I refused to go through that. I had an abortion scheduled for him. Um, and I refused to do it. I refused to go through with it. So PAC, I think it was called mm -hmm. PAC, right? Everybody needs somebody to talk to. I mean, I, I, it's, it's hard to go through life and go through lots of struggles and not have somebody that you can go to and say, you know, am I doing the right thing? Or, uh, you know, my life's tough right now. Can we talk? Who, who was that person in your life? Or was that that organization? Um, well, I'd say it was a mix of that organization and my aunt. Um, my aunt and I had a very rocky 
time now she's my rock like that's who I call now um but at the time my mom was so sick sick she was filling information in my head that wasn't true and I believed it because I was so young Mm. um and it it was weird because my aunt's the one that taught me how to drive my aunt's the one that took me to go get my driver's test and then I had Patrick and she was the one that was there for me. She was, she was the one helping me as much as she could. Um, when I moved back in with my grandma, she would come over three to four times a week to help me. And then it just went south because I was believing all of the, the horrendous things my mom was saying to me. And, um, it, it took a long time to realize that she's the one that's still mentally ill. She's not getting help and everything she's saying is a lie. Um, just to give you some idea on time, we have about 10 minutes, so I know we probably want to get into talking about her, her business and, and all that. Well, I was going to do a little bit more and then the business, we're going to do another show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't I think know the, that. I, think the, I should I, have attended the pre-show me- <laughs> pre- meeting. Well, I think I mean. we're going to do a show just on our business I in think August. That's a great I think idea. Mm-hmm. we talked yeah, about Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Um, can, I did have a question. Go ahead. And, and, and this might be something along, you know, obviously, you know, talking about you have a business now, which mm-hmm. is incredible, you know. Um, so a traumatic situation, you know, happened to your mom Mm -hmm. and, and caused her all these, these mental health issues. Um, obviously a lot of traumatic situations have happened to you. Mm -hmm. What do you do to help you not fall into that, that cycle, just like your mom? Because man, when that stuff's in your face all day, every day, it's, you have to fight against that. You're talking about your mom saying things and telling you things that aren't true and and you were believing those things what do you do now or what did you do to be able to not fall into those those mental health hurdles that would that would come um i think just as time went on i learned to block it out a big part of it was blocking it out blocking her um technology is a great thing now you can block people on your phone so that they don't call you um but it at that time you weren't able to do that yet so she would constantly call me and harass me i mean i'd have to call the police so that they would just call her and warn her not to contact me it got to a point that she was so mad i wouldn't talk to her she would call child services on me and they came out once and saw that everything was fine and every other time after that that she called they would call me and say hey just letting you know your mom's on on a kick again so like you know it it got to a point that even the rest of society saw how bad it was and they just learned to tune it out and block it out. Was alcoholism and drug use, was that part of uh, your life? My life? My mm-hmm. personal life? No. Alcohol, yes, but not um, not drugs. Okay. So now, um, so you met, again, we're back to your meeting a, a <laughs> nice guy. I met, now, a, I met a nice guy. So. Tell us a little bit about how that's worked out. You said he had some issues that he had to go through, different than yours, but now you're together as a family. Mm -hmm. And uh, how's that working out? Really well. I mean, we've been through a lot together in our 13 years of, it'll be 13 years that we've been together. Um, In that time, we've accomplished a lot. We have four children combined. We owned three restaurants at one point in time. Um, We did close our restaurants we were out in New Alexandria where it all started at a golf course and they ended up selling the golf course and asked us if we wanted to buy it, but they wanted too much for what we could f- afford. Um, so we moved the restaurant and then that landlord was also selling the building of which we did not want to buy. We just wanted to continue to rent and we took that as our sign, just get out now while we can. We were never home. Our kids were suffering. You know, when you own a restaurant, like a restaurant's a full-time, full-time mm-hmm. thing. Um, so I worked full time at Subway for my brother because my brother owns Subways. Um, I worked for him as a regional manager and then I'd go home, change and go to the restaurant and work from 4 p.m. till midnight, 1, 2, 3 a.m., depending on what time we closed our restaurant and by the time we got everyone out and cleaned up and stuff like that. Um, but then we closed our restaurant and he went to go work for Bud Smale Mercedes and he's been there since then. And it's been about six years that he's been there. So, um, aside from that, you know, it's just a constant, we just build, build what we can and work on everything together and keep it going. He's fully supported my decision on starting a boutique, starting it online and then 
now look at me i'm in a storefront right on our main street on main street now you uh your brothers and sisters um so i guess your relationship with them are pretty good mm -hmm. yeah i have a relationship with them now um did they go through any uh, at all anything like you went through um my sisters no they had a, what i would call a stable family um they had a wonderful man raise them my brother yes my brother's mother was the same way my mother was so he went through the same struggles for the most part that i did and our father was pretty absent so um he did and he's another person that came out on top he now owns subways he has a wonderful family beautiful children you know raising your children right now you have a lot of life lessons mm -hmm. all right what 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 do you hold as a important thing when raising a a a family or or your children to, to everything you went through how, how do you how do you balance that do you do you, is that something that you tell your kids about do you not tell your kids about it do you you give them subtle suggestions and, and advice but you don't let them know my older two are now starting to learn things because they'll be 14 and 13. Um, we are now starting to tell them things we didn't tell them before because it would be traumatic for a child to hear some of the things that we would have to say. Um, but now they're hitting that teenager stage of being arrogant and thinking that, you know, they're better than everyone else. And we're starting to teach those lessons that they are not better than anyone else. And there's always someone going through a battle and those words that you say could be their breaking point and you really need to watch what you say to people, um, especially in the world that we live today where it's very, it's, it's much more prominent now than it was years ago. It's more known about. Um, I tell my oldest son all the time, especially with the young girls, I know what it was like to be 13, 14 years old and thinking I didn't want to live this life anymore. I didn't want to be here because my life I thought was so horrible. Um, and I told him, you never know if one of those girls you're talking to, if they're going through that same battle and they're just hiding it from you. So the biggest thing we teach our kids is, you know, you need to be kind to everyone. It doesn't matter who they are. Just be kind to them. And do you, are you past your, are you over your past, or is this still, other than this show, <laughs> do you, that, or, or do you still relive some of that, or do you think about it, or do you go at night and wake up, or, or do you dream? How, how, do you, how do you put a, aside, or can you put aside all the stuff you've been through? Um, there's parts of it that I've put completely in the past, and I just don't think about it anymore. There's parts that still... If you want to say haunt me, you know, yeah, I'll have a horrible nightmare. I'll wake up and pretty much relive what I went through. Um, it just depends on the situation and the day. I try every day to not think of my past and not think of those things. But at the same time, that's what made me who I am today. You know, it, it's the reason that I keep going and the reason why I don't give up. Um, I like to look at myself as being a very ambitious per person and wanting to do as much as I possibly can so that others don't have to go through what I went through. Well, we have uh, only about a minute and a half left. And so briefly, uh, you did open up a boutique on Main Street I called... Did. It's called Nimi Boutique. It's Nimi on boutique. Main Street in the old Gradler building. It's right across from PNC Bank. Correct. And we're going to do a show on, on Nimi. We are. Um, any, last, any last things that you want to leave the show with about you might want to tell or that I didn't get to ask you or Rick didn't ask you? Not that I can think of. I mean, my biggest thing is I'm one of those people that, one, I want to help the community. I want the people that are suffering to not go through what I went through. So I'm always a, a listening ear, or if they need help, I'm here. Um, my friends and family will tell you that I will help anyone. I will give them the shirt off my back so that you don't have to go through what I went through. So that's the biggest thing right okay. now is just... Rick, we have a half a minute left. Do you have any comments? No, just thank you for being you and, and, yeah. and doing what you do and, and just you. caring for others and, and just your victories. I mean, you know, that encourages me. Thank you. So yeah. thank you. And it's not a normal show for us. I want to thank you again because when You're we welcome. talked about it, 
you were very open to doing the show. Mm -hmm. And I, I hope that our listeners and our, our uh, the watchers of the show uh, learned a little bit today about you as a person and about maybe their life. So for Jillian and uh, Rick, this is Jeff saying thanks for watching and listening to the Jeff and Jerry Show, and we'll see you next time.